Hello YouTube, Sidekick here with another installment of the Iron Bomber's Guide to the DCS Galaxy. Okay, in previous episodes of the Iron Bomber's Guide, we have taken a look at the factors that go into uh, making a dive bombing attack accurate. Um, we've been focusing on a constant dive angle attack. Well, today we're going to take a look at something that I call the U.S. Navy Aim Off Method for performing that attack accurately and consistently. We're going to look at that on the whiteboard, and then we're going to go out to the range and give it a try. Okay, let's take a look at a standard bombing attack. We've seen this diagram before in previous videos. We've got a plane with a bomb and a target. The plane dives at a constant dive angle, and when his bomb fall line intersects the target, he's able to release his bomb. Now, this is pretty easy if you're flying in a jet that has CCIP and it will tell you where the bomb fall line is on the ground. You just have to move that line to the target and release the bomb at the right time and you're done. But what if you're flying a jet that doesn't have CCIP? What happens if you're flying a jet like the A-4 that just has a simple iron bombing sight? In this case, typically what you do is look up a very helpful table somewhere online that tells you things like, uh, what height you should be at, what dive angle you should be at, and what site depression you should use. And if you depress the site to that angle and you're at the right height and speed and dive angle, then you should be able to just put the pipper on the target and drop the bombs. That sounds pretty easy, but it's not really. Because trying to manage everything so that you're at the right dive angle, the right altitude, and have the pipper over the target at the right sight angle is actually a lot of things to try and manage all at once. So let's rewind the tape to the top of the dive. We've got the plane with the bomb here. Let's take a look at his sight picture. So let's say he's going to do a 30 degree dive. He's going to expect to drop the bombs at 3,000 feet. And helpfully, he has found online that he needs a sight depression of 80 mils. So he dials in a sight depression of 80 mils, and now the pipper is 80 mils below the original center line. The important thing to know in the A4, though, is that it's not 80 mils below the airline datum line or the flight path vector. It's not widely known, but it is true of the A4 that the site center line is actually three degrees below the aircraft datum line, which is where the flight path vector will normally be. Now, 3 degrees is about 54 mils, which means that the flight path vector on the A4 site, when it is centered, is right about here. When the A4 site is depressed 80 mils, the flight path vector is right about here, or at the very top of the site on about the plus 130 mil line. So why am I obsessing about that? Well, because the flight path vector is the point on the screen that the aircraft will fly towards without any input from the pilot if it's properly trimmed. And that's going to be an important point for setting up this bombing run. Okay, so here we are at the top of the bombing run. We know what altitude and dive angle and speed we want to be at when we get the target underneath the pipper when it's depressed to the site depression angle of 80 mils. Well, how do we arrange that? Well, naively, one would think that maybe the thing to do is when you roll in, put the pipper over the target and simply fly downhill until you get to the target altitude and with the pipper over the target. And it should be just that simple, right? Well, no, because if you fly towards the target with the pipper over the target, then your flight path vector will be constantly changing which means that you will have to add constant and probably increasing stick pressure to keep it there, which means that there will be a G-load on your stick when you press the release button, which is going to affect your aim point. Also, it is not a trivial thing to do to try and keep track of your airspeed, your dive angle, and your altitude all at the same time while keeping the pipper over the target and hit the button at exactly the right time. Hey, it can be done. I'm sure there are some of you out there who probably can do it. I found it very difficult to do consistently. I particularly found it difficult to be consistent at any altitude, say above 1,500 or 2,000 feet, 
which is really too low to be dropping bombs in an area where there's any AAA or IR missiles, as we found out in the last video about the threat. Okay, so how do we go about getting the pipper over the target at the right altitude and the right dive angle and the right speed? Well, uh, it turns out that the U.S. Navy has developed a very specific procedure for training pilots to do that, and it's found in this document here, and I'll put a link in the description of the video. Now, at first, you're going to find that um, this technique sounds quite a bit more complicated than the one we just described of fly downhill, put the thing on the thing, press the button at the right time. But bear with me. Um, it has taken me a while to get good at this technique, but I am finding now that I'm getting comfortable with it, my results are getting a lot more consistent than they were with all of the other things that I had tried. So we need to go back to our bomb drop point here and add one more thing to the diagram because it's essential to making this um, system work. And that is we need to put a mark on the ground that is under our flight path vector. And we need to call this the aim off point. And so this is a critical point in this whole system, uh, and you'll see why in a sec. Okay, so now let's rewind again to the top of the dive. We got the same sight picture. We're at, say, at 10,000 feet, rolling in at a 30-degree dive. We have the sight depressed by 80 mils, so our flight path vector is at the very top of the scale like it was before. Now, this time when we roll in, we're not going to put the aim point on the target. We're going to put the flight path vector on the aim off mark. And if we can do that successfully, watch this. The plane should fly itself down to the release point because it's just going to stay, stay aimed where you put it if it's trimmed out right. And when you get to the correct release altitude, your pipper will be over the target. In fact, that's how you'll know you're at the right altitude is because your pipper's over the target. And then you just press the button. Okay, well, let's stop drawing pretty pictures and talking about it and go take a look at what this actually looks like out on the range. Okay, before we get out to the range, we need to have one thing we need to do and that's uh, figure out what to use as an aim off mark. Now, it's possible to do the math and figure out that the aim off distance we're looking for is 1,320 feet. Uh, you'll just have to take my word for that. So using the distance measuring tool in the mission editor, we can see that this second uh, aim off mark from the top is 1,320 feet. So that's what we're gonna use. So let's go fly. Okay, so here we are in the iron bombing test range. Got a load of Mark 82s. Gonna take a run at this target. You can see we're at about 10,000 feet, right around 10,000 feet, right around 300 knots. We're just circling around, just getting up to our in, uh, initial point. Almost ready to roll in. There it is. We're going to roll in here. Now, the top of the site, the third bar or the top of the glass, and we can't see it, is the flight path vector, so watch where that's going through this whole process. See, it's just steady on that aim off point, which is the second, the second aim off marker. And we release. And bullseye. Nice. All right, let's, uh, let's rewind that. Take it a little bit more slowly and take a look at the elements of that approach. First of all, we're gonna roll in. When we get the lift vector pointed at the target, that's when we pull up. Now we pull until we get the flight path vector at the top of the site, over the target, and we're rolled in and aligned. Now we pull the flight path vector up to the aim off point, which is the second aim off marker from the top, right there. And now we just wait. Just wait, not pulling on the stick, not doing anything, just pickle. And bullseye. Okay, let's quickly rewind it one more time and take a look at what the sight picture looked like when we released the bomb, because I think it's worth taking a look. It's also worth remembering that to get to this point, the only thing we did 
was to put the flight path vector, which is the top of the glass at this point, on that aim off marker. And then we just let the airplane fly itself to this point and take a look. We are at 3,000 feet in a 30 degree dive and our pipper is over the target. But the important thing is that we didn't do anything except let the airplane fly itself to this point once we had it set up correctly. And that's the beauty of this method. Now, there is one problem with this method that the astute among you will probably have noticed, and that is that targets in the real world do not come helpfully provided with uh, a handy aim-off mark like they do on the range. And that's an issue that we will deal with in the next installment of the Iron Bomber's uh, Guide to the Galaxy, um, because there is a way of dealing with that, but uh, it takes a little while to explain. So we'll do that in the next installment. And uh, I hope to, that you uh, subscribe to the video so that you get a chance to see that when it comes out. And this is going to be Sidekick, signing off.